So today we're taking deeper into categories, right? Yes, we are deep in, going deeper in categories. So where should we start, Rafa? So understanding what, what, is, a, what is a category and we, how we do categories. I think this is important. So we have been speaking about then, the scope. Uh, Okay, so categories, to understand categories, and uh, George Lakoff's book, which is more about, uh, it's called Women, Fire, and Dangerous Things. And people say, ah, oh, you're putting women and fire and dangerous things at the same place. You consider them the same category and uh, lots of the feminist ideation, like, ah. Oh. But he's basing it on, a, I don't know which kind of uh, language of which Aboriginal or like ancient tribes where they use the same words for these three categories. But the idea is there are so many forms of categories. So your categories used to be things that have similar attributes. Mm -hmm. At the same time, categories can be things that are categorized the same way because they have overlapping similarities. Mm. Like I, if uh, the water is running and a person is running, it's they're not the same category as if they're in the same family of things. They have the same attributes. So uh, there are so many different ways to categorize stuff. So what, what, what do you have in mind? So, for example, in that point of view, I understand one of my ways of understanding categorization is if you go to, to the animal world, you have the animals, you have mammifers, you have people like uh, the ovipars, uh, make the eggs. So we start mm -hmm. to categorize in that way. We, we start to separate. But these are more like families, like Verdiguer, Matar, it's Martinez, etc. So these are yeah. families, which yeah. are things that are connected because they have the same attributes. Yes. So in all right. So basically, how we do this. In, in the mental in the mental world in so with our minds so for example if I have a problem or if I have a situation I have an anxiety situation how do I do this in my mind how do I put this in categories it really depends so in the book that I was talking about George Lakoff's book there are so many ways of categorization and he like he combines uh, he's explaining each one of them. It's very complicated. It's an 800 page long book, I guess. And uh, there are so many things. But for example, uh, if we take uh, the view of the right left brain, so the right is logical, the left is emotional, imagistic, etc. That's a categorization of function. Mm. But the brain is much, much more than that. It's not simply this understands words, this understands. That's a categorization of function. Yes. So if we take that, and uh, we take it into, like, in the right brain, we see experiences as metaphors. Mm -hmm. So I might say uh, I have work is very challenging and I'm not knowing how to deal with work, etc. So here I might have a relationship with my work. Yes. So here I might represent my work as a relationship. Some people are married to their job. Yes. So guess what? They're going to deal with their job the same way they deal with their partner. Mm -hmm. And in the metaphor, and if you ask a certain experience, so what's work like for you? Uh, it's like uh, my wife is next to me, and et cetera, et cetera. And this is et cetera. Compared with somebody thinking their work or their business is like their baby, mm -hmm. they're categorizing as their relationship and the function of their business as something that's very dear to them the attributes of a baby and all of this. So to simplify it, before we go into the next thing, we categorize things based on how we are relating to them. All right. So if I see my boss as somebody that's, that's blocking my way, metaphorically speaking, it's like I've hit a wall. Mm -hmm. That's how it is like. All right. Which is related to property assumption in certain sense. All right. So, for I think the clear example for me is when we speak about about business and we speak about metaphor of movements in 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 business and people came to the to a session say my my work is, my my business is like my baby or my business is like a rocket or is like is like a fast speed car or or 
it's some some people is you no know, it's, it's like a land. I have to put the seeds and I have to work very hard in order to have fruits in in several years. Or it's like a strong building. So by what they are doing in there is they are categories uh, doing categories according to how do they relate with their their business. These are yeah. These are more of like so here you have two categories. It's okay. there is how I experience something and how I conceptualize something. Yes. I might say my business is like a big ship, mm -hmm. but how I experience it, it's like a burden. It's heavy. Yeah. So there is how I think about it, and there is mm -hmm. how I'm experiencing it. That's back again to how the right brain, left brain experience, mm -hmm. which when we are doing metaphors of movement, that's the difference between autogenic metaphors, metaphors that are generated by our experience, mm -hmm. compared with conceptual metaphors, metaphors that we are thinking about and we are visualizing and experiencing mm -hmm. in that sense. All right. So part of the work is understanding how they how the, the client categorize do yes. the category and work from that. Some categories could be like the uh, diagnostics. So if somebody goes to a psychiatrist, for example, their main categorization is, okay, I have this symptom, it's relating to this specific uh, psychiatric issue. So mm -hmm. and if they, I have enough attributes that put this person in that specific category, this person has this specific ailment. Mm -hmm. which is a good function and uh, and so i need to give them this medication in order for them to improve which is a good function and it helps a lot of people uh, same thing uh, with general medicine but when it comes for example with issues that cannot be categorized in a certain sense when people go to doctors and they have these chronic issues like uh, ibs pain i've certainly experienced these uh, for a long period in my life Mm. They go, okay, so this is stress, this is chronic fatigue, this is this. So it's the categorization by elimination. Mm -hmm. It's not this, it's not this, it's not this. Okay, so it's this. Because they have preset categories with specific attributes, which is more related to the uh, structure of things rather than the function of things. All right, yes. So you know that if it looks like something and it's uh, then it's definitely this. I don't remember the code. If it looks like a dog and it barks like a dog, it's definitely a dog or something like that. Yes, 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 yes. I understand. I understand. If you, right. if we do like um, uh, Nick's uh, demo when he was working with somebody who had fear of public speaking and yeah. he asks them, "Have you ever choked a cow?" Yes, you know. So he's entering, like, uh, this person has martial art experience and he has whatever he's doing there. He's giving them another category of choking a cow, which is something he's never experienced. And at the same time, he has fear of public speaking and uh, he is, he's choking himself. Mm -hmm. So he's using this category, which is the body function experience, versus with the experience of actually choking something. Choking a cow, yes. In yes. parallel, there is this video that he has where he's working with somebody who has the teeth grinding. Oh, yes. And he, the person who has the teeth grinding, tells him, I should get a night guard. So Nick tells him, a night guard, like a security character in order to uh, protect your teeth. It's good in this, etc. So he shifted it to a different category, which is he's getting the person out of that experience. Mm -hmm which creates fractionation. And go, okay, so tell me more about it. And is there that? And he's like, affirming and uh, seeing what they're responding to and what they're resisting. Yes, yes. I, th I think th this is part of the things when you change the category in a, in, in, visit our, in a conversational way is that they suddenly in, in one second the person has been taken from this uh, category totally and it has to it's, you have to rethink everything because it's like Oh, this, this thing that it was for sure in this category is not in there anymore. So what do I have to do now with this? It's that feeling of confusion that they, he's generating quite constantly. Exactly. The chickens, for example. The chickens. What do you mean? A random element. You know, when you're like, the, the like chickens, element. for example. Like what I did right now, you go, yeah. what the hell is he talking about? And what do yeah. chickens have to do with that? And it's just a random element. 
yeah. which is basically it snaps the person out of the immersion of their current experience into like chickens, you know, it's chickens and eggs. Mm. How is it chicken and eggs? Well, you know, and the person is thinking and trying to fit it in their categories, but it snaps them out. It's like gets them out completely, yeah. and then it goes back. So what's the problem? Yeah. And the yeah, person's yeah. like thinking chickens and anxiety and what the heck like. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, totally, totally. I, I think this is this is a big part of the world that is is very useful to understand that the, to put the person out of the category that where they have created the problem, it makes to to have to think about the problem in from a scratch again. So it's, it's when you have the option of, of making the the change. That's it. Right. So it is probably is it's mostly the same that the, when we work with with metaphor of movements that we get we change the category of the of the of the problem. First, we try we try to understand metaphorically how they categorize the the problem as the problem situation, and later on to start to to work with that. I think that that's so, the, when it comes to metaphor, it's a, such a high level category that is a representative of something that we're not going into the details of that. Mm. So if yeah. I see the things as there's a wall in front of me and uh, all I can see is I want to move forward because the brain's orientation of moving forward, we're moving forward in time, we're the right way forward, etc. And the hyper-focus on that, we tend to forget like what's right for us, what's left for us, which are also categorizations, mm -hmm. the support that we have, which is the categorization. But it's a metaphorical categorization that's so high level, we are not going into the details, you're taking the full experience of the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and in, in that point of view, th there was one example of one thing that I think is, is, a, is a clear thing of category for me, but when to do is, is key. That is this kind of thing that they, we have seen in sports, when there is a defeat and oh of, or you win or you learn you know that they they are trying to do a change of category so it's not losing it's learning sometimes you win sometimes you learn that's a yeah. very digital so here's the the digitization of a category yeah. which a lot of people fall into the trap to i think in the book of carol dweck who talks about mindset you have the fixed mindset and the growth mindset mm -hmm. so the fixed mindset basically is when a, a child is trained that they are either a good child for doing something or a bad child. They are either smart or they are either dumb. That's mm. a very digitization of things compared yep. with the growth mindset where somebody says, okay, so that was a good job. If you do more effort on this, you might do it differently the next time. You might learn it. So you're, you're uh, encouraging the effort of things rather than the identity. Mm -hmm. If I tell my kid they're smart, they're the best child in the world and uh, all of that, and then they go into the real world and they have a teacher that tells them they're dumb, they have this clash where I, mm -hmm. this is me or this is me, two different identities. Whereas, okay, if I tell this uh, my child that you're doing a great job mm -hmm. and this is what you can do right now, if you like this, you can improve yourself, you can work on your skill. If you don't like it, just drop it because that's part of school. Some things you will do well, some things you won't do well. That mm. says nothing about you. It's just how you're doing things. Yes, yes, yes. I th I think this is very important as well because in the in the six brain elephants, one of the things that he struck me that it was like mm, that's interesting is that he says category category is digital. Or you are inside of the category or you are outside of the category. It's it's so, yes, Pardon? it's a container. Categories are containers. It's a container exactly. The scope is analogical. Inside the container, how? How much we can manipulate spatially, so, linguistically, whatever. Yeah. So basically, by by moving all of this analogically with the scope or, or digital with the with the category, you can you, you can do part of the work. But as as I say, when when you do the change of the category or, or or you win or you learn, is when to apply this this category because this is the, the important thing. If up, just after the fight. You say the person to the fighter, oh, oh, don't worry, or, or, or you win or you learn. You have to be far away of this boxer because you can't get a punch in but the But let me give you an example of this. So if we have the statement, 
uh, um, the man is frustrated. Mm. That's a very broad statement. Mm. Okay. The man is frustrated because he lost his job. Mm. That's we're increasing the scope a little bit. Yes. The 60 year old man is frustrated because he lost his job. We're increasing the scope a little bit more. The 60 year old man is frustrated because he lost his job because he doesn't have technology uh, skills. Uh, increase it a bit more. The 60 year old man is frustrated because he lost his job because he doesn't have technology skills and cannot feed his family now. So you're increasing the scope mm. and from a man who lost his job to a man that's in a specific category who doesn't have a specific category of skills, etc., etc., etc. So we're uncovering the, the the range of what something is experiencing. And when we go on social media or on the forums, like I have a client who has a phobia from cats, what should I do? And everybody starts throwing in what should be done just by the statement. How are they trying to categorize that this specific thing needs this specific solution because of its their own uh, projections on this kind of categorization? Yes, yes, you are right. You are right. So basically, uh, th this is very important because thinking ab about some of, of our actual scenario, you have to understand the scope of the scope of the situation. This is why information gathering is so important when a person presents you a problem like let's say a boxer has has lost a fight and they are frustrated and they are sad and they are angry so to try to understand what is going on and all the you have to, to understand all the scope of what is going on before you you start you to can tell to... the person there like why are you sad you shouldn't be sad sometimes you win sometimes you learn yeah, yeah, yeah. okay the person has just committed six months practicing every single day to do one thing and this one thing that they weren't able to do uh, is what's frustrating them and some then some idiot comes and says sometimes you win sometimes you learn yeah yeah, yeah exactly you have to understand the scope of, of, of everything that is going on in order to start to and, and this is the thing and I think this is one of the things Andy and Nick are very stubborn with when you do a, a a, a change when you do something you do with a purpose you do with an intention and with a you know knowing what you are doing so for example because every, everyone can do a reframing like this or, or you learn or you win or you learn this is a, a reframing i think of category yes everyone knows to do but which is the the purpose how, how do you know that you have to use this one and not another thing so to, to understand all the scope of the of the scenario of the problem situation of the of the person before doing a, a quick fix intervention. Exactly. Oh. So I think that's that's good for today. Yeah. Let's leave them hanging for next time. So thanks for the chat, Rafa, and I'll see you next time. See you next time.